this is a full page picture of Captain Sir Tom Moore. Uh, the headline, not in Tom's name. Uh, Tessa, I almost don't want to talk about this because I almost don't want it to be true. But um, uh, tell us what's going on. Well, it's interesting because I do a lot of my work with veterans of about Tom's age. And this really did. It was a sort of touch paper moment. Everyone gathered around. It was mid-COVID. He was this very vulnerable war veteran heading up for 100, stomping around his garden. Finally, of course, after he's raised millions for the NHS, succumbs to COVID himself. And naturally, there's a charity in his name. How could there not be, one feels. And in a sense, there would be no Tom without that campaigning muscle of the tab. That was kind of one of the reasons why we heard so much mm. about him in the first place, was papers like The, the Sun mm. gave him oxygen. And now, of course, don't ever think you <laughs> can get away turned. with tickling the tummy <laughs> yeah. of the tabloids and then rolling over and not keeping an eye on you. Charity wraps family's new pool complex. Trustees wouldn't have authorised it. And if you dig around in the small print, because there is small print, I'll tell you what, I should have <laughs> brought my glasses in. Um, by all accounts, the couple, this is Tom's daughter, and her husband, they applied in their own names for planning permission for the spool spa complex, which I think we can conclude Tom would not have managed to walk around on his Zimmer frame <laughs> so big. Um, but they used the foundation's name in the design and access and the heritage statement for it. So they built a, a spa pool complex and they say um, it's got some kind of valid business reason. Um, it does leave a rather uncomfortable taste in the mouth, doesn't it? It does. It's such a shame, really, because, as you say, we all remember, you know, Captain Sir Tom, that, that those uh, first few months of, of COVID, when everybody was pretty uncertain about what was going on, he was a bit of a beacon of, of hope and, and raising funds for the NHS. Um, and I suppose, I mean, but you're partly right when people get lots of attention, but also when people get massive amounts of money. Yeah, um, very and, uh, and I think the Charity Commission now are going to have to do their stuff, which is to go and have a look and see exactly what has been going on and how this charity has been run. But they were so, so iconic. Do you remember they had their little moment, the Queen and Sir Tom, yeah, and she knighted Windsor. him in this That's very solitary right. moment in Windsor. Yeah, so there's so much about it that puts us up there and then a reminder that the fallibility of, of, of family, yeah. on the one hand, this is his, Tom's very own royal family, you know, in the end weren't perhaps quite up to the standards we'd expect. Because I mean, he was the really Charity the hero uh, yeah. uh, that everybody needed at the time right. uh, during this period mm. uh, of coronavirus restrictions mm. and all of that entailed and it, uh, he really uh, brought a lot of uh, a joy to people didn't he and uh, the fact that perhaps this is maybe affecting his his legacy uh, although he himself not implicated it's it's uh, the charity commission looking into Precisely. how his daughter was active but it does it does reflect on his legacy doesn't yeah, it yeah but it's it's, it's extraordinary because it was very powerful his generation, those final remaining war veterans, they were in the front line when they were young in the mm. Second World War, and there they were as very old, vulnerable people in the front line again in extreme old age. And I think that's one of the reasons why he resonated so powerfully. Yeah. So he, of course, raising money for the NHS. It was uh, more than 30 million, if I remember rightly. Uh